Hi, I'm Professor Fink, and this is our short video lecture review of Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia. Let's take a look at our lecture outline. So uh, in the uh, lecture outline, uh, so what is dementia in general, of which Alzheimer's is simply the most common type? Dementia is associated with memory loss, loss of language skills, personality changes, loss of ability to recognize objects and people, and loss of motor activity to the point where eventually many of the patients with dementia, including Alzheimer's, are not able to care for themselves. Uh, the uh, memory loss is dis obviously disruptive to their daily life. It uh, makes it difficult. Uh, there's confusion with time and place. Uh, there is a misplacing of things uh, and a withdrawal from social activities and eventually even difficulty in speaking or writing or uh, even recognizing uh, family members and so on, as well as being able to take care of themselves. Uh, as we said, Alzheimer's is a uh, one of several types of dementia, the most common form. It is the fifth leading cause of death among those individuals 65 years or older. Alzheimer's is uh, more common in women than in men. About two-thirds of the cases are in women, one-third in men. Uh, and Alzheimer's is more common in uh, individuals of African-American or Hispanic descent. Uh, it is associated with uh, the buildup of abnormal proteins, both between the neurons uh, in the hippocampus and other parts of the brain, as well as abnormal uh, proteins inside uh, certain neurons, the cholinergic neurons themselves. Uh, there, it does seem to be a genetic, significant genetic component uh, that increases the risk uh, of uh, developing Alzheimer's disease specifically. Uh, another type of dementia uh, that is not Alzheimer's is called vascular dementia. It is characterized by a reduced blood flow through the small blood vessels and capillaries in the brain. Uh, it is, uh, seems to be associated with uh, having a very high blood pressure uh, over an extended period of time and a history of strokes. A third type of dementia is called frontal temporal dementia. It's characterized by loss of what's called the executive function. Uh, in the frontal lobe of the brain. And what that means, the executive function is kind of our self-consciousness uh, that it controls us or allows us to uh, filter, uh, what, uh, are the, uh, make a filter between our thoughts and what we say and the way we act. Uh, we all rely upon that. And when there is a breakdown, a dysfunctioning of the executive function in the frontal lobe, uh, the person basically loses their filter and whatever their thoughts are, that's what they say and how they behave. Uh, this also runs in families, meaning there's a strong genetic component. Uh, returning back to the treatment of Alzheimer's disease and dementia in general, uh, fewer than half of the patients with Alzheimer's disease show any marked response to any drug therapy that is used. Basically meaning that we don't have very effective drugs currently to uh, deal with uh, this dementia in general and Alzheimer's specifically. Uh, the main goal of the drugs that are used or tried uh, is uh, to increase uh, the excitatory neurotransmitter acetylcholine in the brain. And uh, the more common drugs that are used to raise the amount of acetylcholine in the brain, which is excitatory, uh, are acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. That just means that these are drugs that inhibit the enzyme acetylcholinesterase that normally would break down acetylcholine, and the result is the acetylcholine levels rise in the brain. These include donezepil, uh, uh, sorry, donepezil, uh, rivastigmine, uh, galantamine, uh, and they go under the brand names Aricept and Exelon and Reminil. Uh, another approach that's uh, used in uh, Alzheimer's uh, in general and in other dementia in general, uh, is uh, drugs that uh, inhibit uh, the glutamate uh, neurotransmitter. Glutamate is an inhibitory neurotransmitter, and by decreasing its action, uh, the result is an increase in excitatory activity in the brain. Uh, and the, uh, this includes the use of memantinine, 
imantine uh, for moderate to severe uh, Alzheimer's disease, and it may delay the progress or pro uh, progression of some of the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. Uh, uh, sedative and anti-anxiety anti drugs, uh, such as uh, uh, Ativan and Cerax, uh, are sometimes used to uh, control and reduce agitation and aggression uh, and sleep disorders and depression. So uh, these are called anxiolytic drugs or sedative anti-anxiety drugs. Antidepressants are also co commonly included with, uh, in, the, in the management of dementia in general and Alzheimer's specifically uh, to uh, reduce uh, depression and irritability. Uh, and antipsychotic medications are used to reduce hallucinations, delusions, aggressive behavior, hostility, and uncooperativeness. Factors that may reduce the risk of uh, developing Alzheimer's disease include stay active, uh, even into uh, uh, old age, uh, the classic Mediterranean diet, and uh, the use of vitamin E, which seems to be uh, recommended for a lot of things nowadays, including COVID-19, uh, reducing, uh, increasing or enhancing your immune response, uh, and uh, other benefits as well. In summarizing oral health considerations for your patients with Alzheimer's disease or other forms of dementia, patients may have difficulty in verbalizing oral pain or discomfort. Uh, they may, uh, the condition may lead to refusal to eat, pulling at their face or mouth, refusal to wear dentures, uh, and increased restlessness or shouting. So there may be agitation. Uh, patients may forget how to uh, brush their teeth uh, they are more at risk of developing periodontal disease, dental caries, tooth loss, tooth mobility, orofacial pain, impaired swallowing, sores in their mouth, cracked lips, coated tongue, and halitosis. Uh, they may also exhibit xerostomia, glossitis, mucositis, and candidiasis, as well as involuntary repetitive tongue and jaw movements or dyskinesia. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, we just might uh, point out or suggest that if a patient uh, who has dementia is unable to provide a valid informed consent and a guardian has not been identified or consented, then probably treatment procedures should not be initiated until you do get a consent by a guardian, if not the patient themselves. That summarizes our, uh, 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 completes our uh, brief uh, summary or review of Alzheimer's disease and dementia in general and its treatment. We'll see you in our next video.